So in this video, uh, we'll talk about the money market and monetary policy. And uh, just to recap, uh, I have here the diagram uh, with uh, the interest rate on uh, the vertical axis, money, the stock of money in the economy on the horizontal axis, and uh, money supply uh, determined exogenously by the central bank. Uh, so uh, here is a vertical line parallel to this axis because the money supply as determined by the central bank is independent of the interest rate uh, whereas money demand is a uh, negative function a decreasing function of the interest rate uh, so that uh, the higher the interest rate the lower is the money demand and at the same time uh, the money demand increases with normal income so that would be a rightward shift of the money demand function and uh, at the intersection where money demand is equal to money supply uh, we get an equ equilibrium interest rate uh, that uh, uh, clears the money market clears the financial market so uh, the interest rate uh, is the variable that adjusts uh, for the financial market to be in equilibrium and uh, the financial market is here expressed in terms of stocks so we're talking about a stock equilibrium interest rate clears the market for stocks of money and bond okay that just to recap and uh, <coughs> uh, I'm gonna open a new page and uh, talk now uh, give you uh, three examples um, about uh, money uh, money demand, money supply, changes in interest rate, and monetary, monetary policy. So let's do one. The first one. I and M and MS and MD. So we have here our initial I star. So uh, as the first example, let's assume that the monetary authorities want to reduce the interest rate. Uh, we know that the Federal Reserve, for example, uh, targets an interest rate uh, and uh, adjusts uh, the money supply in uh, federal open market operations uh, in order to achieve that interest rate target. That interest rate is the uh, overnight fe federal funds rate um, that uh, is determined in the market uh, for... Uh, overnight funds from the central bank vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the market participants there but we're abstracting from that uh, complication with uh, uh, of between high-powered money and and currency so we're just going to talk about the money supply and money demand here uh, but in any case uh, the central bank uh, wants to achieve a particular interest rate uh, for the purpose of its monetary policy in order to achieve that interest rate it varies uh, its money supply sur supply of reserves in the economy so in order to reduce the interest rate let me actually use a different color in order to reduce the interest rate it's easy to see here that the central bank would have to increase the money supply so with this rightward shift of the money supply curve we're getting a decrease of the interest rate so if now if the uh, monetary authorities want I star 2 to prevail they have to increase the money supply how do they do that that is uh, what I'd like to talk about a little bit more the Federal Open Market Committee will uh, make these decisions and uh, uh, conduct these operations but what do they do well in order to increase the money supply or the supply of reserves uh, the uh, the Federal Reserve needs to uh, buy bonds uh, so by buying bonds uh, the central bank hands over cash in return to the market participants and with that increases the money supply what though happens uh, when the 
when the central bank buys the bonds. It acts as an important uh, purchaser in this market and increases the price and increasing the price uh, in turn will lead to downward pressure on interest rate. We know that this is a crucial feature here. We have the uh, inverse relationship between uh, the price of bonds and the interest rate. So uh, how specifically is that going about? Is that going to happen? Um, the central bank intervenes and buys bonds and buys them from market participants. They have more cash on hand. That is the money supply in the economy. And, uh, and as the interest rate then falls, the demand for money in turn rises since it is less worthwhile uh, to give up the comfort uh, of cash, the comfort of liquidity for that lower interest rate. And thus, we achieve the new equilibrium. Okay, let's do a, new, um, a second example, uh, how the interest rate changes with different differing, uh, economic conditions. Oh, Let's do it like this. And suppose that we get a shift in normal income. So here we have MD with PY1, and here we have MD2 with PY2. So this is the rightward shift of the money demand function due to an increase in nominal income. And as you can see, we have here an initial interest rate equilibrium but after the shift we have uh, an intersection with the new money demand function too where the financial market is in this equilibrium so here we have uh, M2 Oh, actually, let me not label that in, in detail here. But we have here that this equilibrium, we have here excess money demand, excess money demand, which implies excess bond supply. So the excess bond supply will lead to downward pressure on bond prices, upward pressure on the interest rate, and we can see that uh, we will slowly but steadily in this model move up on this new uh, money demand function to uh, adjust money, ma money demand to the available and unchanged money supply but at a higher interest rate. So uh, the crucial thing is to understand what uh, what we're what we're doing we're assuming that we have a shock to nominal income an increase to nominal income that shifts the money demand function it's in other words we might assume that the economy grows so we have an increase in income let's in fact assume that it is real income so we have growth the economy grows and in response to that, the interest rate rises because we get a shift in the money demand function and second, the upward adjustment in the interest rate in order to uh, re-establish money market equilibrium. Let me flip back one page and outline as well here what uh, what is going on. We have an increase in the money supply that is here and second a decrease in the interest rate. So the money supply and the interest rate are inversely related. Uh, monetary policy leads to this reduction in the interest rate. Growth, in the in growth of the economy and the interest rate are positively related. So growth of uh, income leads to a rise in the interest rate. Now, third, the last example, 
we have an initial situation initial equilibrium with I star here let's now assume that we uh, have growth in this economy so as before we're moving from MD1 to MD2 due to an increase in Y as we've seen we get therefore a disequilibrium in the, the financial market here we have excess money demand now that would lead to uh, upward pressure on the interest rate but let's assume that the central bank does not want the interest rate to rise it instead wants to accommodate growth how does the central bank accommodate growth well a central bank increases the money supply in order to hold interest rates steady at this level re-establish financial market equilibrium at a higher money supply at an unchanged interest rate and at the higher income so here increase in income would imply upward pressure on the interest rate but with monetary policy accommodation the money supply stock rises and the interest rate remains unchanged so delta i equal to zero let me label it monetary policy accommodation should try to write that without typos monetary policy accommodation so in these simple examples you can see how uh, policy growth and uh, how policy and growth can change interest rates uh, and how they interact uh, with uh, in policy accommodation.